Welcome to Elaine A. Power's Reptile Side Chat. April is Iguana Month. Last week, we learned about the green iguanas. Uh, you might remember them. I, I have my little display here. These are the ones that are common in the pet trade. They've got the characteristic subtympanic scale, the nice dewlap, the short body compared to the very, very long tail. It's a very long, flexible tail. But these aren't the only kind of iguanas that you might run across. There are actually three groups, and today we're going to talk about the second group. So while the green iguanas are hanging out in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America, there's a group of iguanas that are only found in the islands of the West Indies. And these islands are characterized for their limestone substrate. And it, it gets pitted and eaten away by the rain and becomes limestone karst. And in this rock live iguanas. And so they are called rock iguanas. Now they are in the genus Cyclora, which stands for circular tail in Greek. And so they look a little bit different than their green iguana cousins. Uh, they're a little more massive. The tail is shorter in relationship to the body, but they really are truly magnificent animals. And today we're going to meet the star of my in-person talks as a representative of the cyclora or rock iguanas. Hang on, I have to get him out. All right, some of you may have seen pictures. This is blue. His full name is Lucky Lazarus Blue Rock Iguana, and he's actually a hybrid of two species of rock iguanas. He's half Grand Cayman Blue Iguana, which is where he gets his lovely blue coloration from, and the Nubila, which is the Cuban rock iguana, to which they're very closely related. And so these are um, commonly found, the most one of the most commonly found rock iguanas in the pet trade are these hybrids. Since they can't be released into the wild, uh, they're not purebred of either species. And so some of us can have them as pets. And he's a great ambassador for the cyclora or rock iguanas. Now, let me see if I can let you see the rest of the body. You'll notice his spines are a lot shorter than the green iguanas. He doesn't have that nice, full, uh, flaring uh, dewlap, although he has a cute little dewlap. And this is, these are both shorter because they live in the rocks. So if you're gonna be dashing in and out of sharp limestone rock, you know, you don't want your spines and dewlap being ripped off. Now, he does have uh, lovely jowls, and I think I'm, I'm bleeding on him, unfortunately. And this is typical, you know, of the male iguanas to get these lovely jowls. And he doesn't have that subtympanic scale. Um, if you lean in really closely, you might be able to see that he does have a reddish eye um, surrounding the, the black center. So really striking eyes. And in breeding season, he does become a lovelier shade of blue. Now, okay, let me see if I can show all the rest of you. All right. Now, cyclora are characterized by these stripes along their torso, and they're kind of broken patterned and tail. So they're, they look like shadows uh, when they're along the rocks. I know he doesn't like being held up quite like that. Um, and uh, so once again, it, it aids in their camouflaging so that they can uh, be hidden from predators. Now, an adult iguana naturally does not have many native predators. 
as a hatchling or a young iguana, there are several native predators that will eat them. Uh, the snakes, the racers, various birds, and even some crabs can take one. But an adult iguana didn't have many predators until mankind showed up. So not only have they, uh, some of the iguanas been used as food in the past, but also uh, being bad pet parents, we let our dogs and cats out and they can kill adult iguanas. And so all of these rock iguanas are considered critically endangered. Now I mentioned these are found in the islands of the West Indies, in the Caribbean islands. And what's really neat is most of these islands only have one species or subspecies of the iguanas. So each one has a unique population. And this is what's termed endemic. So most of the rock iguanas are endemic solely to one island. Um, there are a few exceptions. There's two on the island of Hispaniola, which is Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And then the Sister Isle rock iguanas uh, from the related Cayman Islands are found on both Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. Now, these are closely related to green iguanas, close enough that it's recently been found that they can produce hybrids. And in one of the future reptile site chats, I will be talking about invasives and the problems they're having with the green iguanas. Now, because um, these animals didn't have many predators as an adult, they're pretty long lived. They can live approximately 40, maybe even 50 years. So that's a long time for being uh, reproducing. The females uh, are mature, about two to three years of age, and they only produce a, a few eggs each year, especially compared to the green iguanas. Uh, the green iguanas can lay you know, between 60 and 80 eggs, whereas the average rock iguana only lays about 15 to 20 eggs. And uh, once again, this will become important with the invasive. So they don't lay a lot of eggs. They do have to find sandy areas on these islands to be able to dig the dens into the ground to lay their eggs. And so uh, that's why it's important on these islands that their sandy habitat is left so that the poor iguanas have a nesting area. Now, one of the things I think is really cool about rock iguanas is that they have black hands. All of them have these really nifty black hands. So you can see his arms are gray, but his hands are black. Yes, he, he's looking for the, the students that he usually gets to talk to and admire. Um, he had, he, these are also herbivores. They eat leaves, flowers, fruit, but they can be opportunistic feeders. Uh, so if there's a bit of carry-on or perhaps people have dumped food, the human food out on the road, they'll, they'll take advantage of it because desert, dry desert forest islands don't have an overabundance of food choices. So these iguanas will eat pretty much anything they can find that may be edited out. <laughs> He needs to take a break here, so we're just going to let him go over here for a moment. And you can hang out with our other plastic iguana. Now, there aren't, um, there are only about nine species of rock iguana, and then there are uh, approximately eight subspecies. And with genetic um, testing and all, the, the relationships between the iguanas uh, is becoming more and more understood. Um, the Anagata is considered to be one of the older of the rock iguanas evolutionarily, and then um, as they progressed through the Caribbean, you get the newer and, and newer species. Now, you may be thinking, oh, okay, you know, uh, he's pretty, he's got a lovely shade of blue, but he's not really as pretty as the green iguanas. Well, that's not true. Some of the cyclora are strikingly beautiful in different colors. Uh, the Andros has this magnificent red head, and uh, some of the Rileyi have a beautiful colored pattern on them. But we must 
save them. You know, don't take them for the pet trade. Uh, we do have some captive breeding going on. And uh, the two species most popular in the pet trade, these hybrids and uh, the rhinoceros iguana, are being captive bred. And so um, our, our pet needs are being met if, if you really do need uh, to have a, a pet. Now, I have been involved in some of the research done on uh, the cyclor iguanas, and, and I've been very honored to be part of it. Um, so um, one interesting thing is, you know, people wonder why iguanas are important. You know, why do we need to conserve them? Well, studies have been done that found that when plant seeds are eaten by iguana, not only are they dispersed farther, because, you know, there's not a whole lot of uh, what you would consider really good soil on these islands, but they also germinate faster. So the whole plant ecosystem of these islands depends on these iguanas, and that's why if they're lost, the whole ecosystem will be damaged. The males are larger than the females. The females don't have those nice jaws, their heads are, are, are more smoother, um, just like uh, in the green iguanas. And if he's willing, and, and I'll, I'll try, he has such magnificent, okay, so I don't know if you can notice, see, underneath his legs, there seem to be some waxy stuff that's hanging down. Mm -hmm. Now those holes are his femoral pores. And from those femoral pores, he exudes a waxy um, substance that contains the pheromones. So he will rub that on the rocks and, and the, his territory to mark it off and, and say, yes, big male lives here. This is my territory. Guys stay out. All girls are welcome. Uh, and they do mate once a year, uh, just like iguanas. And like the green iguanas, they do have that third eye on the top of their head. They do have the parietal gland or the parietal eye um, that's the same as our parietal or pineal gland. So um, let me go grab blue one more time so that uh, you can see his magnificence again. And they grew to be about four or five feet long. Um, I'm not sure he's willing to show his parietal eye. Can you show me your? No, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> this is the joy of doing uh, live broadcasts with very large lizards. So, um, all right, I guess he's done for the day. And so I guess that will end our session of iguanas, the rock iguanas uh, for today. And don't forget to turn in next week, uh, hopefully on time, with, to hear another talk about iguanas and these magnificent animals. Once again, conserve your iguanas. They're important to the ecosystem and they're unique to the West Indy Islands. Thank you, this is Elaine A. Powers. Check out my websites at elaineapowers.com and lyricpower.net, uh, remember, uh, we'd have those wonderful workbooks featuring iguanas that everyone can enjoy. And thank you for tuning in. Bye.